Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for the Team Builder for Season 7 Week 9 in the GBA. This week we are going up against the Detroit Steel Wings who are coached by Crimson Seabad. So if you have not checked out his channel before, I do highly recommend that you do so. I haven't been sub to him for very long but I very thoroughly enjoy the way that he narrates his battles. Very um creative battler too. I think that's just an overarching theme for this league. It's just that people pull out some weird stuff. And that's actually what we're going to take to heart. Um, no pun intended for later. Uh, if you don't want to watch the team builder in full, I will leave a link not only to Crimson Seabat's channel, but also to skip straight to the battle. So be sure to check that out. If uh, you are going to stick around though, let's check out what we have here. Um, up first, we have a lead cloister. So that's going to have Icicle Crash, Toxic Spikes, Rapid Spin, and Shell Smash. Um, this might look weird, but if you look at his team, uh, he doesn't have any poison types. So Toxic Spikes are awesome for that. Now he does have some things that are levitating, um, or flying types rather. Uh, but generally, Toxic Spikes are great against his team. I'm going to need ways to, if he decides to bring more bulky things like the Sylveon or the Dust Noir, I need to wear them down. Um, Things like Sarina and Curum also have reliable recovery with Roost or Synthesis. So having Toxic Spikes up, fantastic. Now what I anticipate him to bring is going to be a lead Smirgle set. You guys may have watched his battle last week uh, against A-Drive, I believe it was. And he brought a Sticky Web, King Shield, Nuzzle, V-Create Smirgle. So he can get really inventive with his sets. And I needed something that would not only block a possible Spore from Smirgle, but also be able to get rid of his entry hazards without removing my own or my uh, my screens. And at the same time, be somewhat of an offensive threat for his team. So the idea is, bring in Cloyster at the beginning of the match. If he starts off with Smeargle, click Toxic Spikes. Then hopefully he spores on that turn and then I can hit him with an Icicle Crash. And then um, maybe even spin away his hazards. That's the idea. If he does not bring Smeargle, this Cloyster is still useful. It has enough speed to outspeed something like the, um, like if he decides to try to bring like a Scarf Curum, I have enough speed to outspeed that at my plus two Shell Smash range. Uh, really, I just need to get off some sort of damage on Curum anyway. So it is walled by something like Slowbro, but if I get at my Toxic Spikes, that's still fantastic. Uh, now up next, we have a Choice Scarf Swallow, which is unusual to say the least. Um, number one, this would allow me to outspeed his possible Choice Scarf Tornadus Therian. Uh, number two, if his Volcarona manages to get up a Quiver Dance and I no longer have any um, defensive or offensive checks to it, I'll still outspeed it. Heck, I would love it if you brought in his uh, Volcarona and gave me a Guts Boost on top of that. But um, but yeah, so I can outspeed all of his Scarfers um, and no reliance on Quick Attack because Serena can switch into that with her Queenly Majesty ability. Um, and of course Magneton is around, so I kind of just want to be able to U-turn around anyway. Uh, with Cloyster, I feel much more safe doing that because I can manage those hazards a little bit better. Uh, I just went with max speed, just in case, you know, run run those max on those Scarfers there if you don't, if you, if you can't really hit any benchmarks otherwise. On Clef Key, this is going to be our dedicated switch in to, um, a few Pokemon. Uh, well, it won't be, a, I don't, I hesitate to say dedicated switch and I actually had one of my, uh, one of the viewers pointed that out on a video. They left a comment and then also the analyst pointed that out about my team. I can't think about these Pokemon in the same way of having a dedicated switch in for this type of threat because of Z moves. So with that being said, Magnet Rise will help me avoid a Z Tectonic Rage from Crocodile. Um, I can hit him back with Dazzling Gleam. If he happens to bring something weird like the like Ethereum Z Fire Fang or um, the Hydro Vortex Z with the um, with like Aqua Tail, I I have Protect on a few months this week. We're gonna try scouting out for Z moves for the first time. Um, but yeah, no sense in playing around with those nuclear threats there. Now I did bring Thunder Wave on Clefki just because of the presence of uh, excuse me in, because of the presence of Tornadus, the Cobalion. And to a lesser extent, the Curum. Uh, of course, Thunder Wave will not work on Zarina, which is another reason I want Toxic Spikes up. If I can uh, see if it's a more supportive one and force it to Aromatherapy, 
that'll waste one of its turns. Um, forcing it to spin is also awesome. Uh, and I just figured going max defense will allow me to switch in more on Crocodile and Cobalion. And then if he brings like a Spex Curum, setting up Light Screen will allow me to take at least a hit from that and make things easier for my other Pokemon. Now, speaking of a Spex Curum, we have our Assault Vest, and I might change this to Leftovers, I haven't decided yet, but uh, we have our Assault Vest Lantern. Right now it has Volt Switch, Ice Beam, Scald, and Protect. That's just to have something to swap in on Slowbro, because I'm fairly certain Slowbro, Volcarona, and Crocodile are coming to this battle. So why not have something to deal with them? Um, Cause Slowbro can switch in pretty easily on a lot of my teammates because of the presence of the water types that I have. So um, granted I do have a couple of electric types so he can't switch in too easily, but um, yeah, I wanna be able to punish those switch ins if I can. I did just go with the specially defensive build this week because that allows me to come in on something like Sylveon and possibly take some uh, hyper voices as well and then just Volt Switch in order to retain some priority. I don't see Crocodile switching in for just Raw on Lantern because he's really risking a Scald Burn. Um, and then Ice Beam is just there so that I don't get walled by Serena. Uh, but yeah, Lantern's gonna be pretty important this week. Again, getting away from this one Pokemon to handle these threats type mentality. Uh, Lantern also helps really well with, if he does bring Magneton, which actually you may have seen that I had Shed Shell on the Klefki, in case he brings Magneton, I don't want to be trapped in there against him either. Because uh, his, of course, uh, Magnet Pool ability would trap in my Steel type, which is the Klefki. So that would give me a free switch out in the Lantern. And if he was not expecting me to swap out, I would get some HP back from Volt Absorb. Up next, we have Hippowdon, which is... That's as close as a dedicated check as we're going to get this week to the Cobalion and the Crocodile. To a lesser extent, um, the Dust Noir, which can burn me. So that's not really a solid check at all. But Stealth Rock, Toxic, Earthquake, and Whirlwind, uh, I'm putting all this entry hazard pressure on his team between the Toxic, Spikes, and now Stealth Rock. Um, toxic is just there to have something to do against Serena uh, if it tries to switch in there because Earthquake is not going to do very much. And I can also Whirlwind Serena as it tries to swap in too. Uh, but yeah, st getting Stealth Rocks up is very important in this match because if he brings Volcarona, that allows me to pressure it a lot. Uh, this team actually struggles with Volcarona quite a bit because of its speed tier. Um, cause I have Swallow, but if he just brings it in and gets up a Quiver Dance, then that's a problem. So that's why we not only have the, uh, Choice Scarf there for the Volcarona, but we also have our following Pokemon, which is Manaphy, with enough speed to outspeed Max Speed Curum. And then we have Surf, Ice Beam, Heart Swap, and Tail Glow. For those of you who don't know what Heart Swap does, it swaps the stat boost that you and your opponent have. So if I don't have any stat boosts and Volcarona gets up a Quiver Dance and I use Heart Swap, then I get plus one special attack, plus one special defense, and plus one speed. Uh, I went with less speed in case he goes max speed Volcarona, then he will hopefully use Quiver Dance first. Uh, if he tries a Quiver Dance up in front of Manaphy, like if he has, for example, a, um, a, a type resist berry in order to take a hidden power rock or a surf or something like that, then I can steal those boosts from him. Furthermore, depending on when I steal the boost, depending on the if I have like a light screen up, for example, and what he has left, I did bring Tail Glow, because Surf and Ice Beam hits his whole team. Even Slowbro is 2 it KO'd, if it's like max HP, max defense, is 2 it KO'd by a plus 3 Surf. Um, and the most he can do back to me if he's uninvested is like 30% with Psy Shock. So this is kind of a, a weird set on Manaphy, but like I said, we did need to get more creative. Rindo Berry is there for the possible Giga Drain on Volcarona. If he brought Volcarona, I know he's gonna have Giga Drain. So we're gonna be able to take that a little bit better this way. I can also set up a Tail Glow on the likes of the, um, well, I guess it might depend on the set, but I can also set it up on Dust Noir. Dust Noir gets things like Thunder Punch and such, but they don't do very much damage. So um, setting up that Tail Glow and then hitting him would be pretty nice all around. So that's the team. S just a lot of different sets this week. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the team builder. So hopefully everything goes well. I, I really put a lot of thought into this prep. I was up until like three in the morning trying to breed that cloister because I refused to let it be in a dream ball because I didn't want it to give away that I'm overcoat. So hopefully everything goes well. I feel like I've put a lot of thought into this and we know that Crimson Seabat is a really good opponent. So 
we're going to be going into this eyes wide open not too wide though because then then your eyes will dry out all right guys here's the battle Alrighty, so thank you guys so much for watching my team builder if you did not we have a lead cloister with toxic spikes and rapid spin lantern of course is packing leftovers especially defensive hip out on very physically defensive scar swallow uh utility clef key and then a nice heart swap mana fee for icing on the cake here uh crimson seabed did not bring the pokemon that i expected him to bring uh i definitely thought we were going to see crocodile uh, and tornadus but he did end up bringing the slow bro and the um and the Volcarono, like I thought. But yeah, everything else was kind of like, oh, okay, didn't expect that. So that kind of, uh, it is nice, because if I can get my Toxic Spikes up and keep them up, they really hamper his team. And uh, seeing this setup makes me really wish I brought Spikes to this matchup, because I didn't think I would get a chance to set up Spikes. But that's basically four dedicated special attackers. So, um, Having spikes up to put a lot of pressure on them as they're swapping around would have been pretty nice. But anyways, though, we are just going to lead Cloyster. I figured he would actually probably either lead uh, with Volcarona, like he did before a couple of weeks ago. He was trying to just get up early pressure. Or maybe Magneton. Um, and if he led Magneton, I could just swap in the Lantern. If he led Volcarona, I could just Toxic Spike up on it. So uh, remember, I want to let him get a Quiver Dance in this matchup so that I can heart swap it away with my Mana Fee. But he actually leads Serena, which I was a little confused about. I guess maybe he was expecting my lead to pout on, which does make sense. Uh, I figured he would swap out, not wanting to deal with this matchup, but he just stays in and drop kicks me. Even without any defensive investment, that's a 3 at KO, showing that he's probably a more bulky Serena. Uh, and he has Yachi Berry too, which also surprised me because if I had Icicle Spear, it would have popped that and then probably KO'd him. But it works out really well. Uh, he does take the time to spin away my Toxic Spikes. I'm just going to stay in and set up another round of Toxic Spikes knowing I can live another Drop Kick. And that's awesome because now that forces him to either spin or take me out. We're going to go out in the Swallow here to see what he does. He goes for a Synthesis, which I was like, oh, okay. Wasn't expecting that either, because if I had just stayed in and Icicles crashed again, it would have KO'd him from that range. Even uh, even though I was at minus two, there was a good chance that it would KO him at that range. And then expecting him to swap out again, I went for a U-turn and I could have just KO'd him and cupped up my freaking Toxic Spikes. Alas, these are not the plays we make. Knowing that he was going to go for Rapid Spin, and I went out to hit on just to get some Rocky Helmet chip on him. Um, that sucked. I gotta say, I am gonna get up my Stealth Rocks here because I want out some entry hazards for all my troubles. He played that really, really well. I don't know if that was just either just like me playing really obviously or what, but I definitely over predicted in that exchange between those three Pokemon. Uh, just wanting to Toxic Slowbro here, I just stay in and go for that. I figure he might Toxic me, but I was hoping he would Scald, but he just goes straight for Toxic, which is, I will definitely take that trade. Slowbro is a lot more annoying for my team with, to, for my team to deal with than his team is able to deal with my hip out on uh, plus his slow bro doesn't get its leftover recovery as long as I have the sand stream up it just negates it so figuring that he's gonna go for Psy shock now maybe scald gonna go out in a lantern take that pretty easily uh, I was actually hoping for the burn there because then that means I couldn't get toxic by slow bro and then I was looking at his team going hmm I don't think he's gonna stay in here what's he gonna go out into is he, I could very easily see the Kyurem coming in to try to get a free swap in. Uh, I could also see Volcarona coming in, but he just stays in again. Uh, not that I could have done much, but I definitely could have protected. That was my other play there, just protect to get more damage off on him. And then expecting another Toxic, I went out to my Swellow as he just Psy socks me in the face. Toxic on my Scarf Swallow would have been awesome because then I would have had Scarf Guts. But, no, I just lose a lot of HP on Swallow for no reason whatsoever. Uh, he switches out into his Magneton here as I just go straight for yet another U-turn. Uh, he doesn't know that I'm Scarfed at this point, just because of how I've been playing with Swallow. I haven't had... He does know that I don't have Flame Orb, but he doesn't necessarily know that I'm Scarfed. So I was hoping that he would think that I were uh, Bandit or something like that and try to set up with his Volcarona. But he finally goes back out into his... Serena, as I just go for Protect here, I wanted to see what Lantern was going to do. 
um, not Lantern, Magneton. I wanted to see what Magneton was going to do to see if it was Scarf or Specs or what. Uh, he just goes straight for a Trop Kick. That did way more damage than I was expecting it to. I didn't think it would do that much, otherwise I would have just swapped out again. Um, that, that was a little bit unfortunate right there. Now, taking all that damage on Lantern means that I'm not really suited to take on Magneton anymore. But this makes him think that he has a perfect opportunity to bring in his Volcarona and Quiver Dance. And this is exactly what we wanted. I'm going to Scald here, which helps, you know, if he has a Pasho Berry, I can go ahead and, and activate it right there. I know he's going to take out my Lantern with Giga Drain. I could have very easily saved Lantern, but I wanted him to go ahead and knock me out. That way he doesn't get up to plus two. And then we're playing with damage rolls and that type of thing, or maybe even critical hits. Going out to Manaphy here, he uses Giga Drain. Rindo Berry goes off. I'm at above half HP. And here we go. Time for Heart Swap Manaphy. Um, it, you know, I didn't expect that to work, but it worked out really well. That means I have plus one to my speed, special defense, and my special attack. I'm able to take out the Volcarona. And we are sitting really, really, really nicely. Now he goes out to Blue Eyes White Dragon. And... Um, here I figured, okay, just go out to Klefki, but wait. What if he expects that and goes for a Specs Earth Power? No, he's just gonna go for a Specs Draco Meteor and KO me because clearly I didn't learn from any of my over predictions earlier and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a choke. Uh, that was just unfortunate. That being said, I was very, very pleased that the heart swap shenanigans worked out at all. If I just gone out into my Klefki, uh, I would have just been able to easily save my Manaphy for later to set it up on the Slowbro or set it up on the uh, Sylveon. But no, why not make things easier? Uh, I guess we'll just do things this very difficult way. Earthquake doesn't really do much damage to Slowbro, uh, and he is gonna be taking extra toxic damage if he stays in. I didn't expect him to continually stay in, uh, but I decided to take the opportunity to go out into my Klefki here, because I need to start setting up either my light screens or I need to start paralyzing things, because now my only win condition is either getting everything in range for Swallow, or somehow setting up a Shell Smash with my Cloyster. Uh, Cloyster is a lot less reliable because he has Magneton, so that's kind of a thing. Fortunately for me though, every time Magneton comes in, it is taking entry hazard damage from the Stealth Rocks. I am gonna put up Light Screen here, just because I know he thinks that I'm trapped, and that means I can bring in my Hippowdon under Light Screen, which is fantastic. Otherwise, I'd have to worry about possible Flash Cannon. But we're going to see that he swaps out here, which indicates to me that he's choiced in some way. Probably choice Scarf Magneton, just in order to deal with my Mana Fee or um, even the Swallow. Uh, hidden Power Fire. No, Hidden Power um, Ground Swallow. Would have been really cool if I could have bred that. But that was not an option for me to breed in time. I've been really behind on breeding. Uh, we, we're back again to this Hippowdon versus... Uh, Slowbro matchup, but as long as I Earthquake him as he swaps in, he's basically losing a tiny bit of HP every time that he swaps into Hip Out on going for Earthquake. Um, this actually would have been a really good time to bring an offensive Hip Out on, but I was really worried about Tornadus and Crocodile and all these Pokemon that didn't end up coming, so it did not end up doing much for me. Now he goes out to Sylveon, reveals Protect, and now we know that this is going to be a massive pain in the butt. And now is the point where I will reveal to you all that I, this is actually a 46 turn battle. So, um, yeah, I just, I felt like I brought the right tools to this battle, but I terribly, terribly misplayed with them. Um, not swapping Manaphy out into my Klefki on the Kyurem was just stupid because that's why I brought Klefki. Um, even if he had gone for Specs Earth Power, then that means I could bring in Swellow afterwards and then go for Brave Burr because he's locked into Earth Power. So that play was just dumb. Um, here, I do try to go out into my Cloister, uh, trying to predict him going into his Magneton or something. I don't know. I really should have just stayed in there and gone for Dazzling Gleam. Granted, he went for Baton Pass, so he would have known that I was staying in, but that would have forced him more likely into the... Uh, Magneton than it would have forced him into Kyurem and now Kyurem got all the HP back and with that my chances of winning this battle are kind of slipping away uh, He does get a special defense drop on the Shadow Ball which doesn't really matter too much especially because I have a light screen I went for Thunder Wave just trying to slow down the Kyurem 
So if I can slow down some of his Pokemon, then I can relatively clean up the battle with my uh, either Hippowdon or um, Swellow. So yeah, this is this is kind of slipping through my fingers at this point. Um, Klefki does two hit KO Slowbro from this point with Dazzling Gleam, so he won't be able to swap that around as much because he was definitely using that to rack up toxic damage on my Hippowdon. But at this point, the only thing I have that can hit this Sylveon is my Swellow. I also still have my Cloyster left, but I was trying to look for an opportunity to set up a Shell Smash at some point. And that's why you just see me setting up Light Screen so much. Klefki was the real MVP here. I'm setting up Light Screens a ton. Uh, it, if I had brought Toxic on it, that would have been really, really nice. But the Light Screens do allow a lot of my other Pokemon to take hits a lot better. And since he brought such a specially offensive team, that worked out very well. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't end up mattering too much in the long run that I brought the right Klefki set. Uh, it would have been really nice to have spikes on this one though, just because how much we're swapping around. I do try to go into Hippowdon here under my light screen, expecting another Hyper Voice, or maybe uh, uh, swap into something just to get the wish recovery. But he just goes for Hyper Voice again, which is fine. I'd rather him stay in here and go for a Hyper Voice than get the free swap out to something else and get another wish off. Um, I am going to slack off here. I was expecting him to protect, uh, but he just goes for Hyper Voice again, which after that and the poison damage, now I'm kind of back where I started. I'm, I'm a little bit higher, but you guys can kind of see where this battle is going. At this point, my Pokemon are getting slowly whittled down, and there's not much I can do about it outside of bring in my Swellow on a good move, like a Protect, or I could also bring in my Cloyster and try to go for a Shell Smash or two, and try to go from there. Since Sylveon is paralyzed, there is a 25% chance that it'll be fully paralyzed, so I kind of have to, to play off of those paras if I want a chance. Klefki living on one HP was actually pretty clutch right here. Um, unfortunately, it also wasted a turn on my light screen, but at the same token, that means I get to get off extra damage with Dazzling Gleam, yay! He just goes for a wish there because of course he wants to stall out my light screen. He has every reason to. Um, yeah, I just, I really liked my prep for this battle. And if you guys don't want to hang out until the very end of this, because this is a long battle, I don't blame you. I do lose 2-0, or 0-2, rather. Um, I really, really liked my prep for this battle. I feel like I thought outside of the box and I brought some unconventional things that actually worked. I just didn't utilize things properly. Um, and right here was kind of a 50-50. I almost clicked Shell Smash, but he clicked Protect. Uh, if I had clicked Shell Smash first, I maybe could have taken out Sylveon and then forced the Magneton in and possibly flinched it. I don't know. We won't know for now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I still enjoyed the battle. It was a very entertaining battle, although it, at the end game here, I, I'm i not one to play for, for timer stall, even if I think it's a viable way to win. I'm much more about the, the battle itself and, and just enjoying the battle. So, um, even though we were coming down to the end there, I was I was just kind of clicking through my moves there. Now, I do definitely want to kill this Sylveon because this thing was a pain in my butt this whole time. If I had got kept up Toxic Spikes, this thing would have been so much easier to deal with. But because it is paralyzed because of Klefki, we're able to take out Sylveon. And that allows him to finally swap in his Curum and go for the Ice Beam on my Hippowdon. Which that is finally going to bring us to the end of this battle. So, thank you guys so much for watching. That's another loss for us, unfortunately. I, f I really needed to win that to at least keep with the positive win-loss ratio that Cooper left me with. But, uh, yeah. Pokemon of the game was definitely Klefki. Easily. It kept off a lot of pressure for a lot of my Pokemon with Thunder Wave. If I had gone for the Dazzling Gleams when I needed to, it could have KO'd even more Pokemon than it did. You don't see Klefki picking up KOs too often. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the battle. And uh, be sure to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, and I will talk to you guys next time. Later.